Today we're going to talk about five tips I have for you. If you're thinking of going to Thailand and want to maximize your experience, have the most fun, avoid difficulties, just everything I found from my trip back there in 2008 that I wish I knew beforehand. So before we get to my five tips, the first thing I want to say is I had a fantastic time in Thailand. I absolutely loved the trip, loved the training, but a question I get very often is would I go back? And my answer is always uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit conflicted in the sense of, well, am I going back for sort of fun? you know, to train, to enjoy the time, to learn? Am I going back for a fight camp? And nowadays I usually think, well, the main reason for me to go to Thailand since I've already done it is for a fight camp. I'm not gonna go all the way over there and train outside of training camp when I already have a life that revolves around training. So for me, it's been no. I don't think I would go back strictly because yes, I learned a whole heck of a lot in Thailand, but there are some downsides and I'm gonna run through with you very quickly what I found to be the downsides before we get to my tips. The first thing I noticed is my hands, my boxing just plummeted when I was in Thailand and when I came back and had my fight, which was I think three or four weeks after my return from Thailand, I did not perform as well as I wanted just because my hands were not on point. Yes, I ragdolled the guy that I fought. I threw him around, I caught his kicks, I dumped him. I think out of the four or five rounds, he probably spent a good 30 seconds of each round on his back and getting up. So that was awesome, no doubt. But the lack of boxing for me, the skill set of boxing was a big concern. And training twice a day, doing the same thing for six days a week, I found it a little bit wearing mentally, but I could wrap my head around that. I can always overcome adversity mentally, but physically, I found it very difficult. And not in terms of, oh, my body's sore from the really hard work, no, more in terms of repetitive damage, doing the big runs and then coming back and hitting the pads and doing that 12 times a week. It was just a little too much, and I found that the injuries would accumulate, whereas now what I like to do is I like to do my running or my training session for strength in the morning and then in the evening that is where I like to do my striking and I find breaking up the two really helps me avoid injuries and stay healthy. But with that being said still a fantastic spot to go and I want to get to my five points. Before we get to that one additional thought in the future I'm hoping to actually on my property here have the ability for you guys anybody who wants to come out and travel to come here and train with me maybe as opposed to going to Thailand, because there are so many great parts of going to Thailand. But as I just mentioned, there are some negatives and not everybody wants to deal with everything I'm gonna talk about in terms of the tips and just sort of dealing with this big long flight to Thailand, the lack of people speaking English. It's not for everybody. I enjoyed it, but hopefully in the future you all go, okay, I wanna go and train somewhere for a week, two weeks. And man, Thailand is tempting, but I can go and train with Gabriel for a couple weeks on his property, do all the awesome runs around his place, plus really focus in on the technique and just build my skill set so much. So in the future, that is something that I hope to offer. If you guys are interested in that, make sure you throw it in the comments below so I know to really try and prioritize that and make it happen within the next year or two. Now from here, let's move on to my tips. That's what you guys are all here for anyway. Took me a while to get to it. The first thing I want to talk to you about is food. And we're not gonna be talking about the food that you're eating there because the food you're eating there is fantastic. But more specifically, I wanna talk about the ability to get food when you're in the gym, when you're in camp, because I stayed in the actual gyms, and for me it was a bit of a shock not being able to go and get food whenever you wanted. It was basically wake up in the morning and you train. You train for two hours, you eat. And then you have the whole afternoon, you train again, and then after dinner, again, you eat. And for me, two meals a day when you're training that hard was very, very difficult. And I had a little bit of time where I didn't really have access to going to stores and building up a little supply of food in my room within the camp, the Muay Thai camp that I was at. So I very quickly learned 
that having food in your room is very important. If you're somebody like me, before the training session, you wanna wake up and you wanna have something small. Maybe it's a banana. Maybe you finish your training session and then you have breakfast, but two hours later, you're still hungry and you don't wanna wait around and then have to do a whole other training session before dinner. You wanna have some other food. So making sure you have food reserves in your room at camp is very important. It's a tip that I would advise as soon as you get there, make sure you are prioritizing that so you're not going hungry midday, especially if you're like me and you like to eat somewhere between three and six times per day as opposed to over there where it's really two meals per day. Next tip I have is talking about the heat. Now, a lot of people know this going to Thailand, that they're going to be in for some heat that they're usually not used to, which is not regular for maybe North America or Europe or wherever you're from. Having that 30, 35 degree weather is pretty uncomfortable for some people when you're not used to it and you're trying to train hard. So my tip for you is make sure that when you get there for the first day or two, don't go crazy hard, don't go 100%, use it to kind of build up gradually. Now, I didn't do this with that intent in mind. I went there with a really bad back injury that had been plaguing me for uh, three, four months. And eventually I went, you know what, this injury is not healing the way I want it to and I could keep waiting around at home, waiting for the perfect time where I recover and I go to Thailand, or I could just go to Thailand and just get this done and get started and hopefully it will heal and we'll have a positive mindset. And that's what I did. So I ended up having a whole week where I started very slow. Just went in, touched the pads, went, okay, my back's fine. And then the next day went a little harder. And then after a week I went, ooh, the heat over here is really nice for helping the injuries stay down. And I did not jump in and burn out like a lot of people I've talked to where they go, oh man, the heat smashed me so much. I couldn't train over there. I think having that period where you just kind of get used to it, starting slow is very important. So if you end up in Thailand or training anywhere hot, take a day or two and just sort of get used to that extra temperature. So you're sure not to burn down your body, overheat, heat stroke, whatever. Nobody, I don't want anybody passing out. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the boredom factor. Now, this might not be as much of an issue nowadays. People have their computers, their phones, so many other things, Wi-Fi is probably everywhere, but still something to consider because when I went there, I did not have a computer, I did not have a phone, but I didn't even think ahead and take a book. And what you have to realize is sometimes after doing that really hard morning session, and then knowing that in three or four hours you're gonna be doing another hard session, you don't really wanna be heading out. You don't wanna spend your whole day exerting energy to come back and then train, so you want a rest period. But if you have three or four hours to rest, but nothing to do in between, it gets a little bit boring. So go there knowing that you're gonna to have to fill up some time. Like I said, the phone might be the answer nowadays, but if you're somebody who needs some games or a book or something like that, that might be the key for you. I got so bored when I was at Bokau's old gym, Port Pramuk, and I didn't have anything there, and I didn't know that I would need something, I thought there would be some sort of entertainment, that I ended up ripping a piece of paper out of a little book I took to make notes on the training, and I ripped up little tiny pieces and made cards. Cards so I could play solitaire on my own, and I did that for probably two or three hours per day because I had nothing else to do, and I did not come prepared. My next tip is about commitment. If you are going to Thailand, you're making the big trip over there and you want to maximize the experience in terms of learning, which is exactly what I did. I did not go there thinking, oh, I should you know, see loads of sites and party, party, party. For me, it was all about, I wanna leave Thailand, I wanna look back and know I had the full Muay Thai experience, training as hard as I could and learning as much as I can. Throughout the rest of my life in the future, once I'm done, I can go about seeing cities, enjoying it, traveling. Like, of course, yes, I dabbled. I went to some of the temples and saw some of the beaches and did that kind of stuff. But prioritizing sightseeing was not the main reason to be there. It was all about the training. So commitment level needs to be high. And I'd say if you put your mindset in that area before you go, you're really going to enjoy your trip. You're going to look back and go, wow, that was so 
much fun and I got so much experience out of the whole thing as opposed to the guys who probably go and you know drink too much and party too much and then they're done and they're like well it's probably no different than any, any other trip that they're going to do in their lives and it doesn't really stand out and I feel like a good trip where you go and you train and you learn a lot and you get in good shape and you have fun and you're following your passion that should be a trip that stands out it's like a once in a lifetime thing that you just love to do. So if you want that to be your trip, you want that to be the way you remember it, focus in on that commitment. I'm so glad I made my trip commitment-based about learning the sport I love. And the last thing I want to talk about is doing your research because there are so many gyms in Thailand. And we just talked about commitment, but it's very easy to go committed, end up at a gym, and not get good training. And then you're like, well, that was kind of a waste of a trip. And I had to make adjustments going from gym to gym until I found ones where I went, this is what I want. This is the real deal. This has real legit TIE fighters, guys who aren't messing around, and I'm gonna learn so much here. Now, I even did my research before I went, but I still had to make adjustments because I avoided, like the plague, all the tourist gyms, the ones where people who go there are not training twice a day and they don't want to clench with the high level TIE fighters. So you need to assess beforehand what you want out of the gym and really make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. Because if you're going to learn, you're going to train, there's a lot of gyms that you want to cross off. Now I have not been there in a long, long time. We're talking like, I think that's 12 years now. No, that's 14 years. I haven't been there in 14 years. So things have changed. I'll tell you which gyms I was at, but I'm not gonna recommend them because I don't know what changes have happened since. But I started at Simbi. Simbi was a fantastic starting gym. When I went there, I got to sort of deal with the heat, deal with building up just the intensity of the training, but I would not have wanted to stay there for the whole time. Next, I went to Ferratex. Got really good sparring at Ferratex. I've talked to you guys before about that. You can check out that video up there, but I learned very quickly that the guys there were just not training hard enough for what I wanted, and I didn't want to go in and smash people the whole time, spar really hard. I wanted to learn. Then I moved to Eminent Air in Bangkok. That was a great gym, one that I was very happy to go to, and I actually returned to there because I went to Port Pramuk next, Bokau's gym, but I went in the middle of nowhere. The training was crazy, crazy hard. And after about a week or two there, I jumped back to Eminent Air for a little bit of a break so I could go back to having a slightly nicer room, get food in between, because over here I felt slightly malnourished, only having two meals a day. Pretty much everything I talked to you, concerns I had about going to Thailand, things I want you to know, that's what I found at this gym. But at Eminent Air, I was getting the hard training. I was getting great partners who had clench, Pad holders were giving me so much knowledge. I had access to walk down the street and get food if I wanted, but that's only because we did some research and we made some adjustments when we were there. But take your time beforehand and really you know, search out what people are saying about the different gyms and find the one that is right for you because some of them are gonna be way too serious, way too intense for most people. But there's a lot of them where you're gonna go, ugh, this is just catering to foreigners who have no real interest in becoming fighters or being high level practitioners in any sense. So that's my thoughts and my tips on going to Thailand. And I hope you guys really take them to heart and definitely think about the different spots in the world you can go train because it does not just have to be Thailand. Yes, amazing strikers over there but you can go over to Holland if you want. I personally have avoided Holland, great training in the Netherlands, but sparring is crazy hard. And I don't wanna go over and spar like I'm fighting because nobody's paying me for that. So I've avoided it, but that's somewhere that you can definitely consider. You can also look up gyms, very well-known gyms throughout the world and go and train in just random spots where they have fantastic coaches. Or like I said, you can wait, let me know that you wanna come and train with me and it's something that I'm gonna to put together if I can make it happen. So I'm gonna sign off guys. If you enjoyed this episode, you found it helpful, please give it a like. Be sure to check out my other video on Thailand, things I learned over there, little technical aspects, which you can start adding into your training. If you guys enjoyed the video, please get subscribed. And as always guys, train hard and I'll see you back here soon for another video.